What's going on, everybody? It's your host, Dominic Peterson, host of the Doug Zone 503 podcast, where we talk all things Oregon football. Whether it's your first time viewing, long time viewing, kindly ask that you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Really helps with the algorithm, but most of all, telling your friends and family, word of mouth, guys, telling your friends and family about this Oregon football podcast, the Doug Zone 503 podcast, that is. Welcome in, guys, to the podcast. On today's episode, we are going to be predicting who Oregon will land on National Signing Day 2023. So tomorrow is National Signing Day. Oregon's got a only a couple guys they're really looking at. I mean, most of this class is signed in. A lot of early enrollees on campus for this 2023 class, and then it's on to the 2024 class, right? So we're going to go ahead and look at the, some of who those targets are and talk about uh, you know, the chances of, you know, Oregon landing them and my prediction on that. Um, I'm not no expert. I'm not a journalist. I'm not in the business really of making these crystal ball predictions. But, you know, I have been following these recruitments for about a year. You know, as you know, we launched this Duck Zone 503 podcast a year ago, and I've been locking in as much as I possibly can and sharing information from the experts to you guys. That's the whole reason I made this podcast is to get you guys the info, right? And because I've been paying attention, I feel like I have a good amount of knowledge on where these guys are going to go. So let's go ahead and start out with the main one. We got Nicholas Harbor, okay? As you know, if you don't know already, Nicholas Harbor is the number one rated athlete in the 2023 class, number 19th ranked player in the 247 composite rankings, 247 sport composite rankings. He's also an elite track store, track star at six foot five, 225 pounds. So <laughs> freak athlete i mean you take that size you take that speed and combine it i mean you just have a tremendous freak athlete at any sport you really put him at to be honest with you um oregon appears the team to beat for nicholas harbor right now as they just hosted him on an official visit this last weekend uh you know landing before this official visit was on multiple in-home visits with harbor and the harbor family you know prior from the official visit so that just tells you how much this staff really wants that guy when you have an official visit plan and then you're making multiple trips to the home to make sure you're present i don't think his mom made the trip so it's good to get you know planning to make that in-home presence show that you know i'm serious about your son wanting to be here right to the family um Lanning, you know, you know, really wants this guy on the trip for Nicholas Harbor was able to get him on this last weekend, uh, you know, able to check out legendary Hayward Field, right? He, you know, he's said in interviews, he wants to be an Olympic gold medal track star. Where else to do it, right? I've been saying this on the podcast over and over. But where better else to develop your track and athlete skills and play big time football than Oregon football, right? Then to come to Oregon at the University of Oregon play football and be a tremendous track athlete. And you've seen it with Devin Allen, right? A few years back, Devin Allen, track star, played football and was very successful at both sports. And you see him today competing for those gold medals. So Oregon can pitch that to him, go into the home and, you know, pitch that idea. He gets to check out the facilities now on his official visit this last weekend. He also got to check out a basketball game at Matthew Knight Arena where there was a record crowd of 8,000 plus people. The fans were absolutely amazing. Student sex enchanting. We want Harbor. We want Harbor. Multiple pictures floating around Twitter of him in the stands with the fans and it's always good to get that genuine connection with the students with the fans there and and get that feeling that vibe of a live crowd right where it's not the football season we'll take them to a basketball game and get that feeling and although the basketball team hasn't been that impressive this year they got the win against utah and they did it in epic fashion um you know hosting a big time recruit student section was alive and well football team during halftime got to go on the floor got a standing ovation from the crowd uh let's let's harbor no look these these fans that you know know the basketball program are also knowledgeable and probably fans most likely of the football program as well and are in in depth and knowing of my recruitment and, and excited for me to be here you know right so excellent excellent killed it with the basketball move there taking them to the basketball game getting that live you know when you're far away from from home to get that, you know, real genuine connection with with a place that you're looking to be for the next four years, where you're gonna look to expand your life, and it, you're it, far away from home, you get that real love and that real, you know, feeling that people want you to be there. 
it's always good to have that, right? Um, you know, he also bonded with the team really well. A lot of pictures with him and other recruits, him and players. There's uh, TriQuest Bridges had uh, Nicholas Harbor on a story where they were bowling together, and there was one pin, one pin left, and Nicholas Harbor bowls it and just curves the ball does a curveball with the bowling ball and hits the pin. I mean, you want to talk about a talented kid? Kid can bowl, run track, play football. I bet he can play the play basketball really well if you get him on the court. I mean, I'm sure the kid could do it all, right? And, and it's just absolutely amazing. Also, rolling out the, the red carpet here for him, Phil Knight. Phil Knight was rumored to be on campus during the visit. This could have NIL involved. I don't know. I'm not reporting anything. I haven't seen any reports about NIL. I'm sure him being a top athlete in this NIL era, he's being offered some type of deal. Now, you know, Knight was also rumored to be on campus when Jordan Birch came on for a visit. Jordan Birch ended up committing. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So Harbor also brought his associates, Redell Spinks. So Redell Spinks, and you could pretty, pretty much call him his agent, pretty much. This is, you know, in the NIL era of things, the NIL era, um, you know, you, you want a director of marketing, such as Redell Spinks for Nicholas Harbor, okay? Somebody who, you know, makes sure that the university is going to represent this top athlete's brand and name and and expand it and, and make the best out of it. And that's what Riddell Spinks came to do. And I'm sure him talking with Phil Knight at a place, Nike, you know, big time brand here. Um, who who better to talk to the, about brand awareness, marketing than Phil Knight, right? Riddell Spinks, his, his agent, well, I'm just calling him his agent, I guess. And Phil Knight getting together, talking about that. I'm sure he was blown away about the mass talking to the mastermind himself phil knight about what he's done with nike other athletes and other deals he's done um so far in the nil things now i know phil hasn't been tremendously and publicly uh involved in nil yet but i'm sure he's done some things behind the scenes to get some athletes here and that is big that is big 100 percent uh, landing. This is also big here that landing brought in some track coaches for Harbor to meet. So always good to get, you know, not only football side of things, um, but also to get to meet some of the track coaches. Okay. We, while I was checking out Hayward field, get to know who those coaches are, get to get to meet them and make them connect those connections as well. hundred percent. So Michigan, South Carolina, Maryland, Miami, and Oregon are the schools who are all battling it out for Harbor. Each school and coach, really thinks they have the lead on Harbor, which is making it difficult for experts and podcasters like me <laughs> to predict this one. Okay. It's, it's, it's real hard. It's hard to get a lead on this one. Um, you know, how experts really get their information is by talking to coaches. Okay. At the end of the day, coaches, analysts, you know, little guys like that uh, on the schools might not be the head coaches or the coordinators, but you know, defensive assistants, stuff like that. You might get them to talk and, um, you might, you might get some intel, and it's been hard, okay? A lot of these teams, like South Carolina, Maryland, Oregon, they all feel like they have a really good shot at landing Harbor on signing day. Um, you know, ultimately for Oregon at this tight end position, uh, it's starting to become a position of need after the departures of Cam McCormick. That was a real surprising one. And Maliki Matavau, two guys who had a lot of produ production and, and snaps this past season, are gone. Uh, you have a proven starter still in Terrence Ferguson, but other than that, you're going to want some backup guys, okay? You got Kenyon Sadiq in this class locked in, but that you know you, you still want to add more guys, okay? The more bodies, the better. And if you can add a guy like Harbor, just an absolute freak athlete with speed, five-star guy, I mean, that will absolutely just up the talent, up the depth, up the competition in this tight end room tremendously. So Nicholas Harbor plans – to announce on Wednesday, 10 a.m. on ESPN. Let's get into my prediction. So what do I think? Where do I think Nicholas Harbor is going to sign? We got Michigan really pushing hard. We got South Carolina. A lot of the experts have crystal balls logged in on 247 Sports to South Carolina. Maryland, that's a school that's close to home. Uh, parents are Maryland and alum. And then Oregon, a lot of momentum on the, on the recruiting trail late for Nicholas Harbor getting him on that official visit. The recruiting industry, like I said, is really scrambling to find any intel on where 2023 five-star and number one athlete Nicholas Harbor will commit on Wednesday morning. 
every coaching staff that has a hand in in Harbor's recruitment, they think they have a lead on him. After a very successful official visit to Oregon this past weekend where Harbor had the red carpet rolled out for him, I feel the Ducks will land the elite talent on signing day. This past visit was a very key late visit in the recruiting process, and I think Dan Lanning and the Oregon staff made the exact right moves at the exact right time, getting those late in-home visits right before the official and locking things up officially on, on this official visit. Excellent visit. No real travel issues that I've heard of. I think that's key. And I think it was key that he had a really good visit. I think it's key that the Ducks won that basketball game and there was a, a big time crowd there. Bring him, bring his, his um, you know, let's just call it his agent, Riddell Spinks, talk about, you know, some NIL things. I think things got wrapped up. And I think you'll see Nicholas Harbor, five-star athlete, sign with the Ducks on signing day. All right, so let's go to my next prediction here. Let's talk about Roderick Pleasant. So Roderick Pleasant this is another Oregon target here on signing day. Four-star defensive back Roderick Pleasant is down to five schools. We got UC USC, UCLA, Oregon, Cal, and Boston College are his top five schools that he'll be choosing from. The five foot 11 180-pounder is the nation's number nine defensive back and number 91 player according to 247 Sports Composite Rankings. Pleasant was supposed to take an unofficial visit to Oregon this past weekend, but after the USC coaching staff pushed for Pleasant to cancel the Oregon visit, he then did that. He did cancel the unofficial. unofficial. Now, this is pretty common with unofficial visits. When it's an official, such as Harbor, when it comes to Harbor, when the university is paying out of their pocket, that's an official visit. An unofficial visit is where the, the kid's family or the kid himself is going to have to cough up their own money to get to the university. It can be canceled, and USC wanted an in-home visit on that Saturday. They got it. Dan Lanning and defensive back coach Demetrius Martin, though, before that happened, did visit on Tuesday uh, on the prior week. UCLA head coach Chip Kelly came in on Friday to go visit uh, Pleasant, and then Dante William and Alex Grinch came in on Saturday for that in-home visit, which is that, that in-home visit that canceled the unofficial visit to Oregon which was all over the message boards. Let me tell you, that was some drama. <laughs> so this is a 247 Sports article that I'm going to read from. Uh, shout out 247 Sports for this. Uh, Roderick Pleasant just talking about his uh, recruitment and what he what his plans are for signing day. So this is directly from Roderick Pleasant here, four-star defensive back. He says, I'm still trying to figure it all out. I'm being honest. I really don't know right now. I have a grease board that I've been writing all the pros and cons of all the schools, but it could come down to just waking up Wednesday morning and going with my gut feel. I've been praying a lot about as well. Our senior class at Sarah went on a field trip last week that there was growing closer to God and it was good for me. I'm praying for guidance and wisdom and hoping he leads me in the right path. He says this about Oregon guys, Roderick Pleasant. Coach Lanning is building something special, and he really wants me to come in and be a part of that. So really important piece right there in the article that he states about Oregon. He kind of says something, each like a sentence or two, each about each school. So he says something about Lanning, and he likes something, you know, he says they, that they're building something special, and Lanning wants him to be something, you know, a part of that. Pleasant also plans to run track in college as well. So it's like we're just talking about Nicholas Harvey. Uh, Pleasant is one of the fastest fastest prospects in this class no doubt um continue on what pleasant says here he says track is a part of my decision but it's more of a football decision for me when i do my pros and cons the biggest things are my relationship with the coaches location playing time winning development academics all those things are important for me it's a super big decision and it's crazy for me that there are already players in the 24 class who have committed Shoot, man, we got a guy in the 2025 class committed. <laughs> but yeah, is, man, talk about really. I'm still trying to figure it out, but the plan is to lock in tomorrow. I'll pray again tomorrow night, sleep on it, and then on Wednesday, it's time to get this done. So there it is, Roderick Pleasant right there. That's him commenting on his recruitment. Some nice things he said about Oregon as well. Uh, you know, Roderick Pleasant is one of the fastest players in the country and just a tremendous talent, a defensive back, 100%. So what is my prediction for Roderick Pleasant on signing day? 
A lot of buzz has been surrounding the 2023 four-star defensive back Roderick Pleasant as of late. On Tuesday, Dan Lanning and Demetrius Martin from Oregon conducted an in-home visit. UCLA head coach Chip Kelly came in on Friday. Then finally, Dante Williams and Alex Grinch came in on USC for Saturday. Pleasant was supposed to take an unofficial visit to Oregon, but eventually canceled the visit to see the USC coaches for an in-home. This move is an uncommon, uncommon for unofficial visits, although I think that tilts the lead for USC to land the 2023 four-star defensive back Roderick Pleasant. I just think, you know, if if, if Pleasant was, uh, you know, really locked in with the Ducks and, and, and really trying to, you know, get – this is my point here. Let me just say this. If any school can motivate you to make a decision before you make an official decision – I would say that that school has a good hand in your recruitment. <laughs> if a school can get you to cancel because they want to go talk to you uh, on this day, go cancel that other visit with that other school and you go do it. I tend to think that that school leads your recruitment and my gut feeling just from the outside looking in, I think, I think USC is going to, going to get that talented four star. I don't think Oregon is definitely out of it. I do think that it will be a very t- a toss up. Okay. I, I, I really do. I think, at any recruit we're going to talk about, we'll talk about this last recruit next, but Nicholas Harbor, Roderick Pleasant, this next recruit we'll talk about, this one is the most toss-up one for me. I mean, if he's an Oregon, uh, as an Oregon Duck on Sunday guy, I will not be surprised at all. The Ducks have steadily been his recruitment for a while now. Um, ever since I started the podcast, this guy has been a target for Lanning and the staff. So Oregon's been in it, been in it, been in it. We'll see if they could finish it. We'll see. So third and final guy we'll talk about Oregon could possibly get. Oregon's been named in his recruitment. Deuce Robinson, number one rated tight end in 2023. Okay, 14 games as a senior this past season. Robinson was credited with 84 receptions for 1,614 yards and 14 touchdowns. Oftentimes he was triple teamed and double teamed guys go watch the film this guy's an absolute beast at tight end uh Oregon has been leaked you know throughout his recruitment plenty of times in my personal opinion never really appeared to be the favorite though uh you know blue bl- a lot of blue bloods have been after this kid Georgia Texas Michigan I mean USC we're talking all the blue bloods right that want this guy all the best teams in college football want this kid and Oregon's been right there. Okay. Oregon's been right there. They they got him on a visit this this in the summer. Uh on Ju- July 28th, 2022. Uh Deuce Robinson was on campus for Oregon. And as of right now, though, at this moment, right before signing day, Georgia and USC look to be the favorite favorite in his recruitment. Oregon tried to get him on campus this last weekend, but he decided to stay home. Okay. Oregon is trying to stay in it. But the Robinson family decided to keep Deuce at home and not take any more visits, which, I mean, that should tell you something, right? That should tell you that he might be he might be cutting the teams down to a couple more teams and Oregon might be on the outside looking in here. Now, on the baseball side of things, Deuce Robinson, this is the interesting thing about his recruitment, okay? He plays baseball and he's an excellent outfielder. He began to land offers at baseball a few years ago and there is a possibility that robinson hears his name called in the mlb draft this summer um if he does get drafted high enough in baseball he'll plan to play professionally and play in the minors while also joining a college football team as a walk-on tight end i mean (laughs) imagine getting a walk-on tight end with deuce robinson but he'll also be playing professionally in the minors Robinson was in Los Angeles on January 16th for a private draft evaluation with the Dodgers. Robinson heads into the spring season regarded as a potential top 10 prospect among prep outfielders. His father, Dominic Robinson, played receiver at Florida State in the early 2000s and was also drafted in baseball. So this is an interesting wrench in his recruitment here as he might not be decided, right? He, He might be looking into baseball and how he can fit college football into that and college football might not be the number one thing on his mind and deuce robinson does not talk to a lot of reporters i'll tell you right now i've tried to contact him for interviews multiple times and to no to no to no perfection right he would be on the channel if he was guys recruitment was very silent doesn't talk to many yet people and it's hard to get intel on him because of that um but no doubt 
Uh, it was, it's just looking like he's cutting down to Georgia and USC here. I don't think Oregon has a very good shot at landing the 2023 five-star tight end Deuce Robinson. Um, like I said, Georgia USC late here. Kirby Smart, the Georgia, uh, the Georgia head coach, and Lincoln Riley, the USC head coach, both traveled for an in-home visit with the Robinson family. While you know the Robinson family, like I said, did not choose to go travel to Oregon, so. Those two look like they're really pushing for Robinson here. Um, and a potential professional baseball career could be on Deuce's mind that could very well push his recruitment past signing day. Uh, there could there could be potential where he doesn't choose a school because, you know, baseball might be on his mind. I, I think the Ducks, unfortunately, on the outside looking in for Deuce Robinson, never the doubt. I think they will land Nic- Nicholas Harbor, five-star athlete. They're, they're trending really well for him. Uh, Roderick Pleasant, I think that's a toss-up. I would not be surprised if the Ducks land him, but unfortunately, I going with USC. My gut tells me uh, he's going to stay home and go with USC. Okay, well, really appreciate you guys. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below if you made it this far. The video really helps with the algorithm. Most of all, tell your friends and family about the Duck Zone 503 podcast. Really appreciate you guys, how we've been growing this channel, no doubt. Just, just launched a year ago, and man, We've been taking off on social media as well. Instagram and Twitter, guys. You guys have been locking in with me. Really appreciate everybody. I'm your host, Dominic Peterson. As always, guys, go Ducks. I'll see you in the next podcast. Cross your fingers, guys, for these guys on National Signing Day. I'll be on the next pod to talk about National Signing Day and what went down. These are my predictions, guys. I Like I said, don't get mad at me. Don't, don't unsubscribe if I get things wrong. I have no way an expert just an in-home podcaster sharing the news. (laughs) Really appreciate you guys. As always, go Ducks.